The Bengals defense has performed at a high level this season. Luana Rumo's here to break it all down from Eli Apple to winning in Carolina and so much more. We sit down with the Bengals defensive coordinator, not just one time, but twice. It's a two-part show starting now on Locked on Bengals. You are Locked on Bengals, your daily Cincinnati Bengals podcast. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. What up, Bengals fans, and welcome into another edition of the Locked on Bengals podcast. I'm James Erpine, and my co-host Jake Lisko and I are going to talk with Bengals defensive coordinator Lou Anarumo in just a second. Thank you so much for making us your first listen here on the Locked on Podcast Network, whether it's on YouTube where you should subscribe or follow wherever you get your podcast. Thank you so much for doing so. We feel the love even during a bye week, and today's show brought to you by Prize picks. Prize picks is daily fantasy made easy. You pick two to five players, and if they score more or less than their prize picks projection, you can win up to 10 times your money on your entry. First time users can receive a 100% instant deposit match up to $100 with promo code locked on. That's prizepicks.com, promo code locked on. And look, th- this Bengals team, they're five and four at the buy, and a big reason why is because of their defense. And they've done it without Cheeto this past week. Cheeto Beowuzie getting injured, and he's going to be out for the year. So they're going to be shorthanded the rest of the year. But DJ Reader has been out since week three. And we will talk with Lou Anaruma about this defense in just a second. But I do want to update you. It sounds like DJ Reader will be activated, at least cleared, to practice this week, this coming week. Because the Bengals, well, they have a roster spot open now that they, they, maneuvered a little bit uh, on the practice squad in, in doing so, and they have a, a defensive tackle spot open. So it makes sense. And I, I saw DJ Reader on Tuesday, and, and he worked out. I posted a video of him on Twitter. And no, he can't practice with the team, but he did work out on the side again. And it, it just feels like he's on track to come back. So we'll see if they actually go that route. But it feels like Lou Anarumo is going to get some help and Mike Hilton as well on track to, to return, which is, is really good news for that Pittsburgh game because that's a, a huge, huge game that we'll dive into next week. Also, shout out to Joe Mixon. He he was AFC Offensive Player of the Week, uh, the FedEx Ground Player of the Week. The dude, he's racking in the awards, and he should because he had five touchdowns, and it's one of those memorable, memorable games in Bengals history. But without further ado, and we start there, by the way, with Sunday's win over Carolina, Let's get to our interview with Lou Anarumo. Shout out to Emily Parker and the Bengals for making this happen. Obviously, uh, Lou Anarumo as well uh, for spending some time with us earlier this week. Let's dive into it. Part one of two, Lou Anarumo talks with Jake Lisko and myself right here on Locked on Bengals. Let's keep things rolling on the Locked on Bengals podcast with a special guest. In fact, Lou, I I think it's your first time here on Locked on Bengals. It's Bengals defensive coordinator, Lou Anarumo, uh, appreciate the time. I know you're busy even with the bye week. Uh, thanks for coming on. Oh, no problem. Glad uh, glad you guys have me on. I've been waiting. I mean, I've heard about this, and uh, I, I feel uh, I feel honored here. Can you tell yeah. Can you tell us a little bit more about how you've heard about this? Or are we <laughs> are we gossip among the coaches, or what? I don't know about among the coaches. Just out there somewhere, and you know, in the uh, in the world of uh, these podcasts. So I've I've yeah. heard through the grapevine. There you go. That- there are many, many options out there. So thanks for uh, for taking some time. Uh, let's no let's start with with this week because you're as shorthanded as you've probably been, or you were as shorthanded as you've been. I think it's safe to say since 2020, and and we know how how that season went. And yet your guys go out there and pitch a shutout in the first half, allow one first down. It was due to penalty, and and bring that Panthers team back down to earth a bit uh, were you, I, I know you have a high expectations for your guys, but were you surprised at all that they played at that level specifically in the first half? Well, I think, you know, Zach kind of set the mood for the team uh, going into the thing and uh, you know, just getting off to a fast start. We go right down the field to score. Um, you know, the guys on defense feel that energy. We're running the ball. We're moving, you know, everything's kind of going our way early. And then, uh, you know, we get out there, get a quick three and out. And I think that that was a big part of it. You know, we, we felt the momentum, you know, really on our side from the, right from the beginning. And so, 
you know, the guys that we had out there, I, I trust, I believe in, and, um, you know, they, they, uh, they all performed at a, uh, obviously a very high level. I mean, that's a team that had come in the week before scoring 37, I think 37 or 38 points, five, almost 500 yards against uh, Atlanta. And then the week before, you know, uh, I have great respect for Tampa Bay's defense and, uh, you know, they had almost 400 yards against them and 21 points. So, um, you know, they were kind of rolling a little bit and, um, you know, we were able to get after them, which was great. Was there anything in particular that you guys did this week that was more effective than what you saw on tape from those previous couple of games with some replacements from your opening day starters, J2 Feli in there again without DJ Reader and Shadobe Abuzi obviously now injured. Looks like there was a little bit more too high in the secondary in terms of a little bit more cover two in particular this week was, was that part of the key or, or was it execution? What, what's the answer there? Well, more, more probably cover two as the game got out of hand, you know, you just want to keep mm-hmm. things in front of you and uh, things like that. But um, you know, it's always each call, each game is going to be so different based on the flow of the game, how it's going, what we need to stop or try to stop. And so, you know, it'll be, it'll really depend on how the game is going to be honest. You know, we, we feel like, um, you know, with our guys as cohesive as a group as they are, we feel like we can, uh, you know, shift gears at any point and try to get something that maybe wasn't necessarily in the game plan and then, uh, you know, kind of transition to that. Yesterday we were able to, you know, just stick with what we had and it worked well. We'll get back to our interview with Lou Anarumo in just a second. But whether you're looking to pop the question or you have a milestone to celebrate or you want to let your love sparkle, make sure you check out Blue Nile because Blue Nile can help make those celebrations even more special. If you're out of the Cincinnati area, you need to get to Blue Nile because they've helped millions of couples create their perfect engagement ring. They have bench jewelers that will help you find that one-of-a-kind piece that you're looking for. And if you're looking for a special piece just to commemorate an occasion, well, they have jewelry experts on hand 24-7 available via phone or chat to help you. And you can shop stress-free because Blue Nile has a 100% satisfaction guarantee. All orders shipped in discreet packaging, so it's not going to give it away. Make your moment sparkle with Blue Nile. Go to BlueNile.com and use code Locked On to save $50 on your purchase of $500 or more. That's B-O-U-E-N-I-L-E.com. Code Locked On to save $50 of your purchase of $500 or more. BlueNile.com. Promo code Locked On. All right, let's get back to our interview with Lou Anarumo. Lou, you mentioned your guys and kind of molding things, and I think over the past year and a half it has been kind of a a week-to-week league a week-to-week for your defense where you guys do different things at different times this week it was shorthanded and and you're still able to uh, obviously play at a high level was there a moment for you uh, over this past year and a half where you realized oh this is the the defense that is going to give me this mad scientist label in in all of these things essentially lead to success did you was there ever a moment where you realized all right this is the the defense that's going to uh, be able to maybe not carry the team, but certainly put the the team in position to win. Um, I, I just feel like uh, when we acquired the guys we did through the draft and um, in free agency, I, I felt when we started, you know, when we got pieces like Logan Wilson, Akeem, um, you know, Marcus Bailey, you know, you had, uh, you know, you, you're adding around Jess and Sam, um, you know, and then you get the free agent class that we got, um, uh, you know, back in the spring of 2021 and we're able to get Trey and Cheeto and, you know, Vaughn, you know, the, the year before. And you can see even in 2020, it obviously wasn't the way you wanted, but there were games there where we were able to string together some good games on defense. And um, you could kind of feel it kind of growing, the system kind of falling into place. And, and then, you know, um, I, I just think it was gradual. And then last year, you know, these guys just play so well together and this, we really don't have any selfish players at all. It's a great group and uh, they all want to play well for each other. Again, I'll go back to our meeting last Wednesday. Um, so we, we, we play Monday night, uh, Tuesday, uh, player day off. And then Wednesday we have our first meeting of the week and Mike Hilton had hand surgery at seven thirty in the morning. He was sitting in the defensive meeting um, at, you know, 1130, whatever it was, 12 o'clock. Cheeto, uh, Cheeto had his knee, uh, you know, has got to have his knee done. He's sitting in his seat. Uh, Cheeto and Mike haven't missed a meeting. Cheeto was sitting behind the – he did not want to go in a suite. He sat behind the bench yesterday, um, barricaded off. So 
you know, obviously couldn't get out of the way. So we just set up a chair and an area for him behind the bench. He didn't want to be anywhere else. So uh, in my uh, 10, 11 years, whatever the heck, it's 10 years in the league now, um, you know, I, I don't know that there's another group that would really be like that, you know. Uh, and that just shows you how much these guys want to uh, play for each other, how much they care about each other. And, uh, you know, it, that goes just so – it goes so long and, and uh, you can't put a price tag on that. You've got some new guys that are stepping into bigger roles right now. Cam Taylor, Britt, I mentioned J2 Tufele, and there's Zach Carter's role expanding a little bit too with some of the injuries on the defensive interior. Have you seen some growth from those guys in the last few weeks? I was really impressed with uh, J2 Tufele a few weeks ago against Atlanta. Looked like he had another nice game uh, against the Panthers. Cam Taylor, Britt, uh, maybe a little bit more under scrutiny with your with your DV background. Have, have seen some stories or, or some reporting about you getting – some, some coaching in with him on the sideline. How have those guys been in their expanded uh, playing time? Yeah, so I think you start with Cam. You know, he's a young player. He's a young corner. Most of those guys uh, struggle at times. Um, all corners struggle at times in this league these days, mm. uh, especially when you're young. So every moment for Cam is a coaching and a teaching moment. So, you know, between myself and Charles Burke, does, uh, Chuck does a great job with those guys and uh, – you know, uh, I certainly will get around them when I feel necessary to make a point to him. And, and um, but every rep for him, uh, like he didn't come off the field yesterday because it's it's just more reps for him to play. And mm -hmm. it's like preseason reps that he didn't get. So um, that's how I looked at yesterday. But, yeah, he, he's certainly getting better. Uh, Jay's been, uh, you know, really marrying hobbies, done a great job with him. He's done – he's been a heck of, uh, of a pleasant surprise. He's just active in there. You know, I think when we get back to full strength, the fact that uh, he and Zach Carter have gotten as many reps as they have will only help us as we go down through the uh, the back half of the schedule. Lou, you, you've dealt with some injuries this year, obviously referring to, you know, DJ Reader, Cheeto, yeah. et cetera. When it's it's serious and, and it's, you know, long-term, multiple weeks with key guys like that, some of the most important guys on the team, What's your reaction? What's your philosophy? Obviously, if those guys still want to be around, that's great. At the same time, it, it makes it probably that much harder on you, that much harder on the defense to be successful. Um, I, I love those guys being around, to be honest. I, I just think that, um, you know, the fact that they're there to support their teammates is huge. Um, you know, when you lose impact guys, certainly like Cheeto, as high of a level as he was playing, you know, Every, every team in the league is searching for corners every game, every week. It's just a, it's a really, really hard position. Um, and so when you lose a guy like that, it's, it's obviously going to affect you. Uh, I felt like Eli came, came back yesterday and, and played really, really well. Um, that route that he knocked down, that's, that's a, that's a hard route for a corner to cover when he's playing man to man. It's a crossing route running away from him. Uh, that's if not the hardest, one of the hardest routes that they got to play. So, you know, uh, I love the guys that uh, that they want to be around because it just shows support. But at times, you know, it's it's uh, it's it hurt. It really hurts when I'm sitting there, sitting, sitting, seeing him sitting behind the bench, and I'd rather have him have him show the pads on going out there. But um, you know, it's uh, it's a blessing to have those guys. Some optimism. It sounds like that DJ Reader may be back shortly after the bye. It seems like an incredibly important piece for your defense. That to me the identity of, of what you seem to do and please correct me if I'm wrong here is, is around versatility, versatile pieces like Jermaine Pratt, who comes up from being a safety in college to playing edge in your five, one fronts in some, in some packages and DJ reader in particular being a, a linchpin that allows you to go lighter in the box sometimes against run looks and gives you more resources to, to deal with things in the passing game is DJ readers presence really that thing that allows you, how important is that? I guess to you to have a guy like him who can play multiple gaps and do things that you don't necessarily coach at lower levels of ball that allow you to use resources in the back end. Oh, it's huge. Uh, DJ is uh, before he got injured and last year was, uh, as playing as any good in uh, playing as good as any interior D lineman in the league, uh, both versus the run as well as, you know, giving some pass rush to mm -hmm. us. And, uh, you know, like you mentioned, he does allow us to do certain things that, you know, might not be able to do with some of the other guys. And, 
you know, you're, you're, you could play some split safety coverages because, you know, DJ can play a gap and a half, and sometimes two. <laughs> um, and, uh, you know, he's, he's uh, so valuable to us, and I can't wait to get him back. Lou, you guys started the season defensively, not allowing a, a touchdown in the first seven games of the season in the second half. And um, to me, in my words, the defense really, you know, carried the water a bit early on in the year. And, and that's a big reason why you're five and four feels like the offense is catching up now. But one thing that I've noticed, whether it's the two and three Bengals or the four and four Bengals after, a, you know, an ugly loss on the road to, to the Browns are now at five and four. Everyone says, whether it's player coach, there's no finger pointing. And I, I feel like other teams I've covered defensive players may say, well, it'd be nice if the offense would, would be able to, to run the ball or would be able to, you know, hold on to the ball and, and things like that. Is, is that unique in, in how rare is that to where maybe a whole unit might be carrying the water and playing well for multiple weeks, another no, unit might be struggling some, and there's no finger pointing? Great observation. And and I'd say to you that it is rare, it is unique, um, especially these days. And uh, we're fortunate that, you know, we've been able to, you know, put the pieces together the way we have. And um, I think it's always when things are going good, it, everything's fine and you don't have to, everybody's. Uh, playing well there's no there's no issues it's no problem but every team in this league at some point is going to hit that patch where there, there is struggles on either side of the ball and um, that's when you need the core veteran players of your team to stay together tight uh, so that they don't allow those things and the good news for us is all of our young players are getting trained and treated that way so they know going forward that this is how you act in times when things aren't going that well. You know, we have this thing on defense. We talk about first meeting of the year. I, I showed him uh, some climbers climbing Mount Everest. And, and, you know, I was like, you know, they were showing the camera looking down to the ground from, you know, 27,000 miles in the air or whatever the heck it is. And, uh, you, know, or, you know, don't look down. Just put your head, put your head up and keep climbing. Um, and I think that that's kind of the makeup of what the guys that we have is they're not going to flinch and whether things are um, going great like yesterday or, you know, can be a little rocky at times, we don't flinch. And, and I think that's a huge part of, uh, you know, why we went as far as we did last year and hopefully we'll extend to this year. We'll get back to our interview with Lou Anarumo in just a second. But first, I have to tell you about Bet Online because Bet Online is a one stop shop for all things sports wagering, whether it's the NFL. And let's be honest, this week, you're going to kick your feet up. You're going to relax. Maybe you're watching a little red zone. Maybe you're going out to a bar. You don't have to sweat whether or not the Bengals are going to win or lose. You're going to enjoy football. And you know how else you can enjoy it? By making money with Bet Online. So don't delay. Go there today. Yes, I meant to rhyme. It's not just NFL. In prime time, uh, it was close to rhyming. It, it's not just NFL, though. It's college football. It's NBA, and it's anything in between. But college basketball now underway. So it's the fastest and easiest way uh, to start sports betting. So get there now. I've used them. You should, too. Bet online where the game starts. And with that, let's get back to our interview. And don't worry. This is segment three. Guess what? There's a second part to this dropping later this week. But let's get to our conclusion of part one of our interview with Bengals defensive coordinator, Lou Anarumo. Yeah, you've had this, this continuity now coming into this year where there are fewer new faces, but the, the couple of years getting to this point, getting to last year and this year, it was a really transformative time on the defensive side of the ball. There are, of course, some, some holdovers from the previous regime. Sam Hubbard, a, a guy we've talked about, Jermaine Pratt, has been there for some time now. Jesse Bates, obviously, has been there. But you talk about the cohesion of the team. Is there a, a story that you could tell about that or, or maybe just an observation or a narrative that you've seen grow over those years as to how this came together with so many guys coming in from different teams around the NFL to come together and be this cohesive, versatile and, and kind of chameleon unit. And I want to get into some of that week to week stuff yeah. as well, but what kind of led to this? I just think uh, again, the, quality people that we, you know, Duke and his crew upstairs and the, uh, the coaches putting our time into looking at uh, the college guys and, and um, you know, acquiring the free agents that we did. And I felt that the night that we had that big um, free agent dinner back in the spring of 2021, when it was Trey and, and um, Cheeto 
Uh, we had some offensive guys in that that year, and and I could feel that these guys uh, were just kind of clicking together. Um, and uh, you know, they from that point on, it's just grown. And you know, I'll have some of the veteran players speak to the speak to the group uh, Saturday night before the games, and the way they talk about each other, and the, and the way they don't want to let each other down, just tells you that you know they they have taken ownership of the of the team and a, and a, and a, and of our group on defense and um you know when you have the players take ownership you really got a chance to do something special Lou Anarumo and the Bengals defense well they continue to roll on that is part 1 of our conversation with Lou Anarumo but don't worry tomorrow well there will be a part 2 and unlike some of those bad sequels like Caddyshack 2 I think this one delivers so think of a sequel that you think delivers because, well, that's subjective. For Jake Lisko and Lou Anarumo, again, shout out to him for joining us. I'm James Rapine. Make sure you subscribe on YouTube where we're getting closer to 12,000 and follow us wherever you get your podcast. Leave a five-star review if you can because, well, that's going to make more Bengals fans be able to find Locked On Bengals. We appreciate each and every one of you. And until next time, I'm James Rapine signing off for now. Thank you so much for listening to the Locked On Bengals podcast.